Hey everybody, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We are at episode 656. It's December 15, 2021 as we record this. I'm Sebastian Peake. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm still going to be Brett Van Sprenberg tonight. And you can subscribe to our email list. Be updated on things like going live for this podcast recording session. Go to pcper.com slash subscribe. You can help support the site and podcast distribution by heading over to patreon.com slash pcper. Get the extras. And be exposed. Sir Bogative. Yeah, he gave us a nice bump this week. Yep, we appreciate that. Sir, Sir Bogatov, and be exposed to the uh, the patented Sebastian wit and wisdom uh, mm, on Patreon, yeah. which is reserved specifically for Patreon members. Right? Yeah, I don't I don't oh. provide any wit or wisdom anywhere else. I save it all <laughs> that for is random Patreon posts. Yes, uh, Josh, it's that time Me. again. It Burger is Burger of the Week. Okay, well, you know, this one came out so good, I, I just, I had to take a picture and, and, and post it. We've seen the popper before, but they did an outstanding job in, in packaging up and presentation. The fries were outstanding, perfectly crispy, tender on the inside, maybe a little over seasoned, but not too bad. The jalapenos are breaded and fried, and you got the cream cheese in there, and you got the the raspberry chipotle it's it was fantastic i i i'm still not hungry after eating that six hours ago seven hours ago yeah it was good again it, it's uh, this this is the place that's it's going to be on diners drive-ins and dives they make good food it looks a little crazy there now there was a special today it was called the high school burger and I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. It was three. You're too old, Josh. Quarter, Don't do it. Three quarter pound patties smashed with, with fries and American cheese smashed in between them all. And that was the burger. That's, that's three quarters of a pound of ground beef. And I just, I just couldn't do it. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. You'll live through uh, New Year's. At least yeah. you're going to be fine, Josh. Yeah. At least. <laughs> the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which, as we are live streaming this podcast session, has not been released yet, but is being released tomorrow, December 16, Thursday. It's coming to PC via the Epic Game Store because you know they love to spend money on exclusives. So, no, you can't put it on Steam. Well, they don't like to make money, so. No, they've spent Makes over a sense. billion dollars on exclusives so far, just from one article I read. Well, that sounds affordable. But it's just not enough. But you know what? Okay, let's talk about the system requirements, because obviously this has been a PlayStation exclusive up to this point. So if you're not a PlayStation fanboy like certain podcast hosts that I could mention, then you probably haven't played this yet. And they have they tweeted out the system requirements. I have a larger picture of it here. The minimum requirements, you have to have Windows 10 64-bit version 2004 or later. You have to have a Core i5 3000 series or an AMD FX 8350 or better. And you have to have 8 gigabytes of memory, 100 gigabytes of storage, DX12, Mm. of course. I'm requiring Windows 10, so obviously you need DirectX 12. And then the minimum graphics are also DX12 graphics cards, so GTX 780, RX 480. I don't know why it says 3 gigabytes of VRAM, because it was never a RX 480 with only 3 gigabytes of VRAM. But that's what the 780 has. Uh, and then the recommended, you have to move that up to a Core i7 3770 or higher, and a Ryzen 3 3100 or higher. 12 gigs of memory, same storage, and either a GTX 1080 or RX 5700 or better. And that's assuming a I mean, resolution of 2560. It's... That's clearly a lie. You can't buy the Ryzen 3 3100. Why not? I haven't seen it around unless it finally came back in stock. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, look, if, if you're somebody who had it, it's not like you can buy oh, an oh. i7-3770 brand new or an i5-3330 brand new anymore. Fair enough. You might be able to find the 8350. <laughs> yeah, in a brand new gaming PC from someone. Like, <laughs> Who knows yeah. what we'll even find anymore. There's probably a brand new PC out there somewhere with an RX 480 in it, too. And that's oh. not really a joke. 
I just read that and Costco is now having to uh, to zip tie their display PCs closed for because people are ripping off the components. Does not surprise me. Quietly no, just pop why steal it? Just dump the crypto miner on it and let them pay for the electricity. <laughs> oh, much better idea. I don't like the Epic Game Store. I would much rather own it on Steam. I don't think I'm going to be able to resist buying it tomorrow because I want to play it on PC and see what the performance is like. Because I have it on, I had it on PS4, upgraded to a PS4 Pro. Then I ended up getting a PS5 and played the PS5 version, which does look better, but it only looks noticeably better if you sacrifice frame rate because they have a high detail mode that caps the frame it looks really i don't know what it is i'm assuming 30 frames per second but it looks really choppy at times so then the high frame rate mode reduces the detail settings back to ps4 level so if i can have both put it on a fast graphics card play it on pc speaking of graphics cards and pcs amd released a new graphics driver and this is important because the hot new game is Halo Infinite. And this is another one of those instances where AMD driver version matters a lot. You never want to get caught as a reviewer with a one revision old graphics driver when you're checking performance out because look at these numbers. Up to a 16 to 19% increase in performance depending on the which RX 6000 series graphics card you're using. Now they're saying like 4K Ultra, it's... I'm pretty sure this is across the board. It also gives you support for Fortnite, Icarus, Blender 3.0 on Radeon, something that NVIDIA was advertising. They have Blender 3.0 support. So obviously, if you use a Radeon graphics card, you need 21.12.1. Hopefully, there are no bugs. Of course, there are some fixed issues, some known issues. It's a graphics driver, but big... I like how it doesn't show up on their driver, because usually you update via the driver. Yeah. It's still convinced that 21.10.2 is the newest. Hmm. Huh. Now I don't have Halo Infinite installed, which might be part of it. Yeah, there was the a trigger. Yeah. Yeah, there was an early driver, of course, because that the game codes were seeded early and you don't want people I mean th- there was one tweet in particular that I'm trying to find here. I think it was from 3dcenter.org. They were complaining about this new graphics driver not having support for older operating systems, which <laughs> At some point, I mean, now that Windows 11 is out, I even I have to accept that Windows 10 is as far back as you can really reasonably expect support. But so you're not trying to get it on the N98 SE build? No. <laughs> uh, but here we go. Here's the tweet. Uh, 3dcenter.org. Halo Infinite on Radeon RX 6800. Computer-based benchmarks. Driver 21.11.3. They were getting 20.1 FPS. The Halo beta driver... 55.6 FPS with the same GPU. And then it goes up to 61.6 with the new 21.12.1. And then their complaint, users of older AMD cards and Windows 7 slash 8 do not have access to a driver suitable for Halo Infinite. Now I looked through that driver, by the way, and it has support for cards going all the way back to the RX 480. So if you do have an older card than that, say you're still on a 290X, sorry, there is no support for that. But as long as you're on either Windows 10 or 11 and have mm-hmm. any graphics card made since the 480, which is, what, five-year-old card at this point, you do have support. Which isn't that old, but it's not. I, I'm beginning to understand. Yeah. I really don't have a problem. God, that was their first uh, 14 nanometer FinFET. Mm. Graphics, that is. Mm. Oh, things and have GCN changed. lived for a very long time. Yes, and it still lives. Yeah. Yep. Vega forever, man. Let's check in live <laughs> on this laptop in front of me to see how the file transfer for my NAS is going. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, look at that. Oh, zero. Wow. There's, there's been some movement here, folks. What's amazing Ooh, about you, this uh... is this meager file transfer is enough to slow down the internet on my laptop to the point where I can barely use it. There's something wrong with the wireless card in this thing. I, You know what? We should have been taking bets, actually. We should have... Uh... We should have been having people put money down on how long it was going to take. Mm. No, I still figured it'd stall out on a file and you wouldn't notice till the end of the show. Yeah, it's Ooh, currently hovering between zero and three hundred fifty-five kilobytes per second. Not kilobits; it's kilobytes. So we're we're making mm. some progress here. Uh, I need to just wrap this up or just give up. I should have put it on a thumb drive. <laughs> I don't know why I thought. Oh, let's use the NAS. Obviously, sneaker, sneaker net. net faster. Yep. 
sneaker net. There's something to be said about it. Something to be said about emergency response when you need it. And, there you is. know, say you've fallen down your stairs and your phone is nearby. And it's an Android phone. And it's running version 10 of Android or higher. And you happen to have Microsoft Teams installed. What could possibly oh, go die. wrong? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> You're gonna die. <laughs> so well, yeah, this is how much fun the last several days have been in between everything. Uh, yes. Amazon, yes, I, AWS went out. Um, Open VPN umbrella people decided to hammer um, oh, something yeah. the last couple of days, and and we were having extreme slowdowns and BSODs. Um, yeah, it just. <clears throat> It's been awful lately. And Teams, Microsoft mm-hmm. Teams, people trying to get at and, and enable two factor authentication. It's just, it's awful. It's wonderful, it's, isn't it? it it's, oh, yeah. I'm so tired. I feel. But anyway, go ahead with the story. I'm just saying that the last week, and it's the week before Christmas week, it's all coming down. Yeah. It's like I picked the wrong week to stop sniffing glue. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always start again. It's true. It's the gift that keeps giving. Yeah. Uh, it's a lousy week to stop sniffing markers, too. So, yeah, uh, somehow Microsoft Teams managed to get its little fingers into the ability of just about any modern Android phone to be able to make a call to 911. Now, th- this is not specifically for my- people that have paid Microsoft Teams and then an add in so that it works on uh, PSTN. This is just freaking Microsoft Teams. And they even pegged it down to the point where it's like, actually, if you have Microsoft Teams installed, but you're not currently logged in because 2AFA just decided to log you out so that you could put the code back in again. For some reason, the buddy phone is unable to reach 911. Absolutely nothing. The original response, which, of course, was on a Reddit thread, the official Google one, though, is that this is incredibly important and we're going to work on it and get to it probably... January 4th or so. This was received as poorly as you would expect. Uh, They have since fixed this bug. Uh, There is an update to Teams which allows you to make phone calls to 911 if you have Microsoft Teams installed. But it doesn't answer the actual question of what in the hell did you do? How is this VoIP communication thing getting a hold of your ability to call 911. It, it's got no ability to do it. That That's programmed into Skype and Teams and the various other ones. So Skype, you, you can't dial 911 because they, know where, they aren't going to know where you are. You dial that using the cell network. So somehow, someone has managed to interface Teams with that and managed to royally screw the pooch on this. I don't know if we're ever going to hear the actual explanation of what it was doing, how it got its fingers into that level of the operating system of Android, but it's fixed. It's just, this is one of those things that should never have happened and really should never have been possible to have been happened. It just seems like making outgoing phone calls would be something that a regular other, you know, companion application on the phone would never be able to interfere with. You can still make phone calls, but the emergency 911 just would not connect. Please explain for those of us who are not security minded. What is log4j? What's all this noise about log4j? Frank. <laughs> There's been a bit of this uh, problem going around. Log4j Damn is that. a <laughs> is an underlying logging mechanism that uh, is written in uh, Java, and the hack had to do with the way that the Java engine parsed or the library that wrote and parsed the log files would work with a directive that told that engine conveniently, hey, go fetch an external library object class from an arbitrary other location, oh, which might not be local. So that means it could fetch a remote class from wherever it was directed and then run it, instantiate it, and then execute it. Well, that opens up a rather severe security hole such that many, many, many server-side systems were vulnerable. Banks, governments, internet service providers, Microsofts. So you like to, lie, you like to write a log of uh, 
Yeah, you wrote, you like to write a log of uh, the exploit attempts against your uh, systems. Just about uh, well, we'll log, just really. use that log right. system to use to actually infect right. you. Well, we'll just now, skip it. <laughs> Remember, the point was, is that anything that was open to the front end, say it was a form field, a text entry, a URL that that system was logging, if you put the correct key uh, strokes combinations, the, the key characters in it, that would be logged and cause this, this hack, this, this remote code execution to potentially be executed. That's all it took. It was trivial. And it's been there for a long time, unfortunately. Like, yeah. It is so ridiculously ubiquitous. It, it's going to be in a tiny little moving part of this C program that someone wrote, you know, years and years ago, and which isn't maintained by anyone anymore, but is still mission critical for the system. And actually, without writing that log, has a condition it to say, if you're not writing the log, it's, it's just going to have to stop dead until someone comes and fixes it, except dude that fixed it is that one dude in Nebraska who just passed away and doesn't care anymore. Right. It's, this is a good everywhere. diagram of, of how that how that remote payload execution sort of worked, where a uh, bad actor would load the log file with that remote execution uh, rec execution command. It would load something off of their server. It would run with the same uh, credentials and permissions on the vulnerable server, execute whatever code the the bad dude wanted to have executed, which was potentially hey reach out to my server and uh, let me get an interactive shell on yours. You know, just to shortcut the nonsense. Just let me just take full control of your box based on the permissions that was running the service that this thing just logged into. Very nasty. Very, very bad. Yeah. Many, many, many places were affected. Well, and you're still hoping your vendors are on the ball and realize that they need to patch their stuff too. <laughs> yeah, I mean... There's going to be some vendors out there that are going to be continuing to struggle with this for quite a period of time because yeah. it, it's enormous expense to react to this very, very quickly. It's an IT expense that a lot oh. of organizations are not prepared to deal with or even know how to deal with because they don't know how deep it goes into their systems. Because as you were saying, Jeremy, it's in some forgotten piece of code that only gets run once in a while and, and that's going to you know pop up six months from now and they're going to get yeah. creamed with it over and over again. Oh, God, yeah. Sad state and so they just put in a new one today, a new patch today. And so it, it just completely disables uh, the whole Java naming and directory interface that this uses uh, to be able to write logs. But what it does is that means that anything you were running that actually depended on that is now going to fall down and go boom, because now that's literally not running, but it's also almost the only way without going in and modifying your code to be able to know that you're at least a relatively secure at this point in time. Yeah, so there were legitimate the uses going to break stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, there were le legitimate uses for this this JNDI uh, you know inclusion, but yeah, clearly it wasn't well thought out in this regard. No. Let's pause here to hear a word from our first podcast sponsor this week. These days, it can be difficult to find and hire just the right candidate for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has made it easier to find the candidates worth interviewing faster and for free. Recently, I myself have had the opportunity to use LinkedIn Jobs system to locate potential positions. Super easy and very productive. You can create a free job post in minutes to reach not just your own network, but far beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 770 million people. Focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience by using targeted screening questions to get your role in front of only the most qualified. Then, use the simple screening tools on LinkedIn Jobs to quickly filter and prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash pcper. That's linkedin.com slash pcper to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So people still make New Year's resolutions. They talk about slimming down after the holidays. <laughs> Excess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Valve, they're taking advantage of the fact and they've got to have some kind of positive to come out of the Steam Deck delay. Originally, it was supposed to be shipping this month. Now it's not shipping until February, until it's delayed again. So what are they doing? Well, they're they're hitting the treadmill. They're drinking more water. Uh, they've started, I don't know if they're doing like keto or what they're up to, but they've slimmed down Steam OS considerably. Uh, I saw this on Computer Base earlier because I like to read Computer Base through Google Translate like a normal person. And 14 gigabytes 
more room for activities, writes this person at PCPro.com. Their latest SteamOS build reduces the footprint on a device's storage by uh, a considerable amount, that 14 gigs, from 24 gigabytes to around 10. That's, that's good, especially if you're like me and pre-ordered the 256 gigabyte version. That extra 14 gigs is like a game, an older game. Because all new games are like 100 gigabytes, but... And there's some other improvements, and, and the wireless performance has been improved, apparently. HDMI output has been corrected, other stuff, so they're, they're working on it. Oh, look, the file transfer! The file transfer is over, the file transfer <laughs> check, is over! Let's check in on uh, the file transfer. Oh, wait, I don't know, there's some duplication here. That's okay. It's nothing. It's deduping. And look, it's doing it at like hundreds of kilobytes per second. Oh, no, hundred. No, less than a hundred. And it's slowing down again. <sighs> See, there you go. Look, I just, I just wanted oh, oh, to move uh, my configuration from my computer upstairs to this one down here. That's all. There it is. It's finished. It lot. finished. Digitimes Asia reports that SK Hynix has started shipping 24 gigabit DDR5 chip samples. Now, of course, there won't be just one chip on the module itself, so these are intended for DIMMs that will have... This is odd. I mean, we, we're not used to these numbers. A 48 gigabyte module and a 96 gigabyte module used in cloud data centers, it says. But I just wonder, maybe this will kind of trickle down. What if we have desktops with like two 48 gigabyte DDR5 DIMMs for a total of 96? Hmm. But I don't know. Anybody have any thoughts on this story that I added? Uh, it's, it's nice that... Now DDR5 is located on Newegg Shuffle. <laughs> you want some DDR5? Well, I hey, saw your tweet on that. Lottery Josh, just buy a motherboard. <sighs> yeah, just get whatever motherboard might we bundle with uh, with the damn so. Right. Oh, it's bundled even. Lovely. Yes. Yeah, it's a bundle deal. Spinning Rust is available, and it's getting really, really big. 20 big. terabytes from Seagate. And this is conventional. Really? This really? is not shingled. It's yeah, not. This is it's conventional. Not shingled magnetic. Yeah, okay. yeah. Good. The Iron Wolf drives are good. I don't know about these uh, Exos Enterprise drives, but uh, it's the same damn thing, but will optimize more for uh, writing in an enterprise environment. I see. So I don't. But really yeah, they're they're full of helium, else. which okay, you would need. Well, either way, I mean, they're they're perfect for an ass because they're CMS. I like how you pointed out that 20 terabyte SSDs are still a bit rare. I, it's I don't true. think I'd want to know how much. <laughs> how, well, first of all, do you know the price of these uh, Seagate S uh, hard drives? Have they not announced the price yet? So, no, but the 16 terabytes that are out uh, usually go for around five ish and are currently on sale for three. So, okay. I think that gives us a decent idea. Let me go over to the Tweak Town review that you helpfully linked here and see if they, they didn't update it. List it. Oh, I was hoping. They no, they might have updated it, but let's go to the final. I think part of the was... page. Final yeah. thoughts. Uh, by Jack uh, Handy. Yes, Jack Handy. And they have a, a link to the 18 terabyte version, which is only 350 bucks. That's yeah, wow. like they're they're on sale. I, Nicely affordable. That's a lot of storage. It's a Even lot of storage, man. 350 is not yeah. bad for an 18 terabyte drive. That's an enterprise drive. I agree. Okay, no. Um, someone has probably obviously bought them all because I see it for sale on Amazon for two grand. Whoa. Okay. Oh. So obviously uh, the Chia heads have already gotten a hold of these bloody things because they are oh. actually ridiculously fast. Uh, 285 yep. megabit but the throughput is. For spinning rust, I mean, hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Alan's and they were actually hit right now. Let's ask him how many he yeah, bought. He's yeah, how many of these twenty terabyte drives did you get, Alan? Yeah, eighteen ships 18 from Where Waves Imports. Mm. Where is this? I, I see the eighteen. Uh, uh, it's the Iron 16. Wolf that came up for me. Iron Wolf. Okay, I just searched Seagate twenty terabyte. Maybe it's something in the Can a Canadian. Amazon. No, this is calm. Okay. Uh, although, Alan to be fair, it was the same blame. price in Canada, too. <laughs> Wait, Alan was it says 20... it's not him. He's not to blame. Okay, he says it's not him. All right. mm -hmm. 
Oh no, actually, hell, no. Buy it in Canada. It's only eleven hundred and fifty bucks. Wow. Oh. You're you're still getting ripped off, but See, I mean, getting ripped off with anything money, anymore. <laughs> it's fine. It's like buying retail jewelry. You know, it's a scam. Now we've talked about twenty terabyte drives, but what about seems small. Thirty hmm. terabyte drives. I'm willing to believe anything at this point. Fifty terabytes, a hundred. <laughs> One is it petabyte or petabyte? Or does it matter? Is it like beta and Well petabyte? it matters a lot. Okay. So SDK, a you know, a platter maker, the saucer like components that store data inside hard disk drives, according to this article has announced yep. that it has developed a new type of media that uses microwave-assisted switching, microwave-assisted magnetic recording, or MASMAR technology. MASMAR. Seems legit. This seems legit because Toshiba is usually it is. one of the leaders in this area. Mm-hmm. It's coming. Could it be launched next year? Could be. 30. Yeah. I think it's been coming next coming year soon. for a while now. Yeah, 2023. They put a microwave on my reading and writing head. Yep. Yeah. What's so like the, the old can, Reese's uh, commercial? I <laughs> didn't put chocolate in my peanut butter. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I remember Al back in about 2017 or so, but it's taken me a while <clears throat> to dig back that far. But yeah, the hammer and the mammer. It's neat. Yep. I mean, it. It, it's it's not easy to uh, change the state of something that precisely and that quickly. Especially yeah, when you're allowed to be crazy. sloppy around the edges because you've got no choice. <laughs> Does that hard drive come in a 900 watt or an 1100 watt range? <laughs> yeah. And you're going to want a... Like your microwave oven. You're going to want a dedicated yeah. 20 amp circuit for this in your kitchen. If you plug it into that 15, it's probably going to blow the breaker. During uh, lengthy transfers. Mm -hmm. All right. Should we move on to hmm. our gaming picks of the week? Yeah. Some the gaming, gaming updates, corner. as it were. Gaming yeah. pickiness. Yeah. So what, what selections have been made? I never add to this list, so it's always kind of a, a surprise to me when I look down well, and see. Jeremy picked a good one here with Star Wars Eclipse because yeah. the, the video for this is, is top-notch, I think. Really? Oh, it's gorgeous! Oh, the the they did a brilliant job on the trailer, and that's the only thing they're going to do a good job on. Oh, <laughs> this is Quantic Dream. Quantic Dream Famous that for... brought us oh, a becoming human. What was it called? Detroit. <laughs> Detroit. I think that was yes. one of them. Yeah. It was. It made Bethesda dialogue look good and light-handed. Uh, it, uh, hey, wait, they've done some I, I others. like some Bethesda dialogue I mean come on <laughs> yes you like some you're not going to like any of this unless they've really changed it and it's the same guy on charge of it so no it's, it's, it's going to be yeah David Cage yep. yeah. and so, so I'm trying to I'm, I'm cheating because I can't remember what the, the last one they did before that was it was uh, Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls the PlayStation ones, but yeah, they weren't. They're all been heavy-handed and just not good, which is really disappointing. Because I mean, it, this is set in the High Republic area, and you're out in the Outer Rim, and you're going to be. And here it comes, playing several already existing characters with their own backstories and personalities that you get to take over and do what they want to. But the game is just stupidly gorgeous. Yeah. I feel like that it's establishing shot was taken straight from episode one. But Well, I mean, there's going to be a lot of caging. Yeah. Some of, this, some of these shots are really, really awesome. I mean, that's, can, that's from yeah. one of the prequels. That shot was with Yoda. Yeah. It's... it's, it's My it's flesh! <laughs> My flesh! All right. Who promised me flesh? I think we've seen it. <laughs> the pain. Yeah. Uh, the, he, he okay, I hope I'm wrong. Really incredible. Yeah. It's I really amazing wrong, what you can but... do when you take stock footage from some of the movies and cut it in with some green screen stuff and stuff you did on the set of The Mandalorian. And we'll see what the action is. And then add some extra RTS. Since you're cutting it down a little bit. Like. 
<laughs> Look, I'm just a, a healthy skeptic. I'm not going to jump up and down. Maybe I'm just well, uh, hurt. I think this is coming from you're a place not of the pain. only one. I wanted Star Wars to be good. I wanted it to continue to be good. I thought it was cool. I think if you check that, uh, I saw that, some of that them. eye that eye link, it will probably not be good. You're not the only skeptic on board or not on board. <laughs> I like this. Uh, who somebody add this link? Like, don't let the, how cool the eclipse trailer is trick you. This game will not be good. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, that's an opinion, fu- Alice Bell. Yeah, deputy yeah, editor. Alice of, says no. Yeah, she, she's she's oh. using George Bush quotes too. Yeah, yeah, she is. <laughs> fool, fool, me, on, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. Fool uh, me. Well, fool won't get you fooled get again. Fooled, yeah, you can't get fooled again. Yeah, <laughs> fool, fool won't get fooled again. But, well, wait a minute. Yeah. Right. So Alice clearly is of the opinion. She's on a board. Uh, it's, it's hey, not this is her opinion. Yeah. Oh, I got an email about the uh, ridiculous sales going on right now at GOG. You know, good old games. Who now? They, they always have sales. Acknowledge that anymore? They're just GOG now. Capital G O G. That company that you know put out Cyberpunk. They used to sell games. They still do. And look at the sale prices in some of these. It's probably still going to be going on when you watch this or listen to it. Now, the link that I had you pick through, I had yeah. an idea on, hey, you're going to have some family over. You know, you're going to have some friends. You're going to have your bro, you know, whoever's going to be there. Your, bro. your brother, family members, cousins, uncles. Mm-hmm. I picked out uh, this link that would be like $10 or less or free co-op games that nobody's okay. ever seen. Or few have played. There's eight pages of under ten dollar co op games here. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. So you can so you can throw down a dollar twenty nine, you know, and pick up probably a game to get you through the holidays. Crowd with, around uh, the your, PC. Hopefully yeah. they have a secondary input device. Or maybe a second PC, because these games, many of them, do not look very demanding. So well, I mean, you can probably put a lot of them inside stuff. of a virtual machine at this point. But that's, that's, GOG takes that's care of that point. for you. You don't have to screw around with DOSBox settings. It's all built into the, it's true. the uh, installer. It's true. So have some fun with the, uh, the friends and family this week. Buy, buy a few five or $10 games from GOG or free. You know, they've got co-op games that are, are, are absolutely free. Uh, and, and non-co-op games. Are, they have a bunch of them that are just download them and play. Check it out. Well, I mean, it is family, it so cooperation is... is secondary well i thought that would be amusing for people to sit down and play co-op rather than competitive but yeah there are worse things that you could be like buttonholed into doing at a holiday get together like true oh yeah. absolutely play, true play this old game with me like okay that's a lot better <laughs> yeah than I exactly what a better better way to pass a couple hours than do that exactly. with the family around instead of talking about politics with somebody oh you, get away from that yeah just run away all right just say no. Let's pause right here to hear from our second podcast sponsor this week. Are you looking for a company to support your existing IT staff in cybersecurity, network optimizations, or even manage your entire IT infrastructure? It's time for you to take a look at VPLS. VPLS is a managed service provider with over 20 years of industry experience in direct support or even as an entire outsourced IT department. VPLS is a true one-stop shop with their own data center and technical staff to handle everything from data protection to server hosting. They're staffed with industry experts from all across the IT industries and can help you with backup and disaster recovery, help desk and IT support, or even a full custom cloud migration. Look at VPLS as one way to shift the responsibility of managing your IT needs from your business teams and into the hands of the certified professionals at VPLS. They operate 24 by 7 by 365 and can provide after-hours support for your organization. If you're looking to bulk up your existing IT teams or expertise for a specific project or blocking issues such as after-hours support or even wireless optimization and cabling, take a look at VPLS. VPLS can make information technology a competitive advantage for your business. So visit www.vpls.com slash goit to see all their offers. That's www.vpls.com slash goit. It's already time for Picks of the Week. Can you believe it? We've only been recording for like 53 minutes at this point. And the finished product will be about 30 leading into Picks of the Week. Josh, start yeah, us off. Me. Uh, so... I. Uh, Got one of these things, you know. I, I'm kind of old on on not not very quick, but 
Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a decent little cell phone holder you put on your arm when you're out exercising. I actually started doing that again, and I needed to get my little motion in with the uh, the sensor in my cell phone. So I got one of those. They're less than fifteen bucks. They're decent quality. They're they're comfortable. They they're washable. They wick up your sweat. They they're some somewhat semi waterproof. I mean, you get splashed and. It's not going to ruin your phone, but, you know, it seems to breathe and uh, comes in a variety of patterns and colors. You just got the basic uh, black one because, you know, I'm unoriginal and I don't care. Uh, so, yeah, it, um, you know, something I actually bought, something I use. I think for the price, it's it's a perfectly solid product. Jeremy, your turn. What? You made a pick. Now you have to st- oh, face God. the music. Yes, yeah, speaking of uh, being relatively slow, I just found about Ventoy this week. Ventoy is a little bit better than your average boot disc, uh, which, to be honest, have sort of gone a little bit out of style. So this will work on any removable media, uh, be it a USB drive or as uh, someone I was talking with on Twitter is going to be using it uh, on their HP Enterprise servers. You... Uh, you can you compile it. It creates a tiny little boot disk that's not even a. Don't think it was a, a full gig, and the rest of it you can mount whatever ISO you want to it. And by that I don't mean using Rufus or something to mount it properly. I mean you just take the ISO and you dump it onto your boot drive. And so when you boot from this, it pops up into the little menu that you're seeing, or if you're on the audio, it pops up into a a menu where you can choose between the ISOs that you've copied over and just boot from it. You're not messing around with uh, config files. You're not creating a separate one for every single one that you've got. And the thing will even do uh, Linux Live. So if you prefer a certain GUI, GUI lineup layout or a couple of tools on it, it'll save it back to that disk in the ISO format. So the next time you boot up, Boom, you're presented with the exact same thing that you've got. It doesn't seem to care about what uh, file system you're using or what file system you're booting onto for the most part. I mean, if, if you're booting an Apple ISO and trying to read a Windows NT partition, you might run into some difficulties, but there's, there's ways around it. But it's just stupidly tiny and ridiculously easy to use. And, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's not fun digging out the newest copy of Rufus and trying to mount an ISO and then getting all annoyed because it decides it's the wrong size and yada, yada, yada. So, Hey, it's a fancy little thing. Got a handy little 16 gig uh, drive lying around. You can probably actually fit three or four OSs on it. And away you go. I like it. Let's check it out. All right, Brett, this pick is blowing my mind. How is this even? I agree. We we just talked about this a little while ago about the the quality of like the cams that we were using or looking at or would recommend. Yeah, thing behind me. This is, yeah, this is one of the ones that we we just talked about a little while ago. The C nine twenty S. This is a fantastic deal from Amazon. That's stupid 50, cheap. Fifty six dollars. I guess their normal price is seventy, so it's not That's a lot cheap. off. But I mean, I it, mean, there was a time fifty six. Just- Last year, at the height couldn't of you know meetings and like at home, yeah. and, like everybody having to do remote learning, you yeah, couldn't buy one life, of these at any price. Life. And now, no. I mean, this is retail. I don't see anything about it saying that it's renewed or anything. It's shipped and sold uh, by Amazon. No, no it, it's brand it new looks retail pretty package. Good. If if you click the box, uh, I think one over it says brown, brown box. box. Re- yeah, retail yeah. packaging. Oh, with export yeah. license. Yeah, so you can get some software with it. I mean, this is a very good camera, 1080p, 30 FPS. I mean, it's not going to blow your socks off for 60 FPS, you know, high high speed stuff. But yeah, that's but not what you really need. You don't really for... need that unless you have an insane, you know, yeah. fiber connection or something. And outbound bandwidth, you're just not going to need it. It's a great camera. It's a reasonable price. If you couldn't get one, now's the time. Yeah. And it will blow your webcam on your laptop out of the water that's the important thing. oh completely utterly destroy it yeah i mean I, I use a 920 for a long time and the only difference between that and this as far as i know is that privacy shutter yeah the physical it is. Yeah, that's what the s is for idea. yeah yeah yes i just unplug the unless you're a nose hair fetish <laughs> yeah <laughs> unless you're a nose hair fetishist in which case it'll ruin the whole thing and go back to that 
go back to the nose cam on your uh you're laptop. watching and, the wrong although show, i saw if that's what you're into i think it was dell has come out with a, a magnetic one that they say is going to work it'll it snap to their monitor hmm. i'm not quite sure i believe this yeah or at least that it's going it to be a good transfer it's not not for on crt use but yeah, <laughs> I kind of don't like the idea of having everybody staring straight into the camera all the time. It's very aggressive. There's mm. someone's uh, done a, a doctorate on this on, on zoom fatigue. Uh, oh, the uh, mammal brain interprets webcasts as people staring directly at them, even though they're not. The back of your head is like there are a bunch of people that have just been staring directly at me for a great amount of time. And, you know, this used to be a bad thing and causes great amount of stress to be done. So they, they quantitized it and, uh, yeah, got a PhD out of it. This is why our podcast is so accessible and enjoyable, because we're all looking just slightly away from the camera. It's true. My monitor is here and I'm looking at it. And like Josh right now, he just made eye contact with the camera. He's being yeah. kind of aggressive. Now, which is better, this or... Ah, stop. Yeah, don't do that. Huh. Oh, See, he's you'll get stuck it. that way. He's still doing it. If you do that, you'll get stuck that way. Didn't your mother still ever tell you? SCTV, it. we could do the, the 3D. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Uh, uh, Jeremy used to be on SCTV. I don't know if anybody yeah. knows that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, gr- second, the great second second city Candy was a Canadian it. production. Yeah, it was indeed. <clears throat> yeah. All right, for my yeah. pick, for my pick, I actually have one this week, and it's because it's something you know archaic. And why would you ever do this? But uh, did you know? Now I've talked about DOS Box X before. I can't say it, but it's that nice looking front end for DOS Box that has all these powerful features and stuff. I especially like the fact that when you install it, you can choose the uh, default graphics driver. So I use OpenGL. Pixel Perfect, and here was here's what I was thinking. I want a Pixel Perfect integer scaled experience from my retro operating systems, not just DOS. And DOS is great, and DOS has you know thousands of games. Obviously, you can play on any platform from Android phones all the way up through Windows PCs and stuff. But uh, what if that wasn't enough? What if you have a game that you wanted to play, haven't played in a long time? does not play on a modern operating system. You don't want to play the remastered version of it with its like fancy schmancy 3D looking graphics. You just want to go back to the basics. I actually, I had it in my head that I wanted to play the original Age of Empires and Age of Empires 2. And of course, this Age of Empires 2 like, has been redone. You can get it on Steam for like 20 bucks. I just want to play the original and it's a Windows game. It doesn't have a DOS installer. So you need, you need Windows 95 or 98 to play stuff like that. Uh, so y- there is a way without having to resort to running a virtual machine and trying to get audio to work and all this other nonsense there's a way to run Windows 98 in DOS Box X and they actually have an excellent tutorial on their wiki about this which I will link in the show notes but I followed all the instructions it's pretty simple They, in fact they even give you a uh, example config file which is copied and pasted and I will say that uh, when it was all said and done, you really do need a fairly slow system to emulate or else you're going to have wonky audio. They said uh, MMX seems to be problematic when I was reading some threads about it for the problem I was having. I was having choppy audio that wasn't playing properly. It wasn't even synchronized. So I I scaled it back. Your driver's probably saying you're trying to write to what? Yeah, I (laughs) I was emulating a uh, Pentium like 166 MMX. So I scaled yeah. it back. I did 486 DX4 100. That worked great. So I, I think you need to be kind of high-end 486, not MMX Pentium. Or first-generation Pentium, if you must. Non, Non-MMX, because that seems to be problematic. But it runs mm. perfectly fine. In fact, I won't just, I won't just uh, relate my experience. I will just show you right now, live, on this laptop... The insane file transfer that took forever was just trying to get DOSBox transferred over. If everything copied correctly, this should boot into Windows 98. There we go. Now, this is unimpressive because it's just running in a little window. Some of the options here. 
I talked about CPU. The CPU core defaults to a CPU type of Pentium MMX. You don't want that. You want to go down to Pentium. I chose 486, just basic 486. You can emulate a CPU speed. My God, you can hot swap CPUs? Yeah. Wow. So I'm going to put a DX4 <laughs> dream come true. 100 in this thing. Uh, I don't think it has any problems by hot by doing it hot like that. Uh, but here's what, another what thing. What video do. options? I want to see. Video. Look at these. Uh, you have all these different scalar options, of course. Uh, output is what I'm talking about. You can do OpenGL nearest neighbor or perfect. Now, perfect is going to slightly change the way this looks. But when I go full screen, I'll do fit to aspect ratio. Now, toggle full screen. Because of the particular resolution of this laptop, it does not quite um, fit vertically. It depends on what the resolution is that you have set in the operating system itself. I think this one's set to 800 by 600, or, or um, maybe it's uh, 640 by 480. We'll see. I kind of think that's 640, but... Yeah, it's only 640. Yeah. Let's we'll see what the scaling looks like at, at 8 by 6. Will that totally fill the screen or not? Nope, too small. So it, it depends on your actual native resolution. I was doing this earlier on a 1440p monitor, and of course... 640 by 480 exactly multiplies into 1440 because it's uh, 480 times times I don't know what I'm saying, but it, it it looks great. And here I have Age of Empires, the original. And is it's it going to ask you for a code from the manual? No, because uh. the, the original Age of Empires <laughs> actually allows you to fully install, so you don't even need the disc. Mm -hmm. So you can just play it right off the hard drive. If you had the space. Well, yeah. And this would... It looks like it's not running that well. Maybe it's this laptop. I, I was using a much more powerful machine earlier. So I, I recommend doing this on a desktop. If you're going to run Windows 98 inside of DOSBox. But here I could... Uh, anyway. It, it works. I don't have to actually start playing a campaign. But Windows 98 running inside of DOSBox. And if you were looking at the monitor that I'm looking at, because, of course, this is through a um, capture card and it's being scaled, it is razor sharp looking. So, I don't hmm. know. Cool. It works. VMs for the common man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now I can play all the DOS games I want to play, and then when I finally find that title, like, eh, I have to have Windows for that one. Just... I'll load up this alternate configuration I have with an image, a hard drive image that I've made, and it's not that difficult. It's a bunch of steps, but... And Wing Commander 3 is yours once again. That's our show for this week. Uh, we hope you enjoyed listening to it, watching it, or uh, whatever you did, and we will... I think we're going to be back next week. I think the 22nd think worked so. out for everybody, and the 29th didn't. So we're going to take the week... the Wednesday between <clears throat> mm -hmm. holidays off. But for some reason, we're going to podcast three days before Christmas. Nice. I, I really don't know why. I don't know if there'll be any news. I, everything is pre-CES mode right now. So nobody's yeah. really announcing anything. And everything's that, getting more expensive. Yeah. Just to spoil It'll probably it all just week. be bad news. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. We could we'll, just we'll hang out for a few though. minutes and talk. Yeah. We'll just yeah. talk about that. that. That'll be good. Yeah. Josh will have trouble with his mic. It's going to be some riveting. It's going to be awesome. Video. My dog will be awesome. barking. That's <laughs> great. That doesn't mean his feet are going to hurt. That His dogs are yeah. actually going to be barking. No, Maybe we'll have a, a Christmas unboxing spectacular. Maybe I'll devalue oh, all of these things. Maybe we can have, you know, our, our, our picks of the year, our favorite thing that oh, came out oh, you, that we can oh, talk about. Bastard. Yeah. Bastard. Let's see. Um, all the hardware. We don't we want to do buy. the full thing where it's like, you know, the best CPU and the best video card and blah, blah, blah. It's just. Just got to pick Something. one thing, huh? Yeah. Well, that's easy. The best yeah. CPU? Yeah, you can't buy it. Oh, the best GPU of 2021? Nah, you can't, <laughs> yeah, buy, it. can't, buy, can't buy it. Can't buy that either. Yeah, but DDR4 memory. You can yeah. buy that. Memory of the year. You can yeah. buy that. DDR4. <laughs> Comes in a bucket now. <laughs> yeah. You've, you've tipped in, your yeah, hand the, and everybody's the $5 dollar movie bins at Walmart. It's all just DDR4. Yeah. It's pretty low latency stuff. Coming to find out. Re really far down. It doesn't suck. It's okay. Yeah. No, it, it does. Everything sucks. <laughs> well, just, except NVMe SSDs. No, yeah, they, they don't suck. Yeah. Memory, okay, They've good. actually stayed Memory and storage have been fine. So if you're happy yeah. with your CPU and video card, then... Hey, they finally got uh, wheels and uh, joysticks back in stock and, and webcams. 
Ooh, webcams, I'm sure true. about. It's true. I haven't checked yeah. on wheels and joysticks yet. See, I haven't checked my stick kids, of joy. Everybody sent their kids back to mm. school, and they don't need as many webcams anymore, so you can actually buy it. No. Again. Yeah. Yeah. It's all oh, good. don't worry. They're coming home again soon. You know, we're ruining Josh, the next still... week's show. I know. All right. Well, uh, Josh, see you, you later, guys. Driving games? Next week. <laughs> yes. All right. Hey. The end. <laughs>